as the U.S. celebrates its independence this weekend, officials are urging Americans to stay home to contain the coronavirus pandemic. The holiday weekend comes as COVID-19 cases surge in dozens of states across the country. One of them is Florida. The state has once again shattered its single-day record for new cases. It reported more than 11,000 Friday, bringing its total to over 190,000. Michael George has the latest. Fourth of July fireworks may be loaded and ready to launch on the National Mall in Washington, D.C., but in the nation's fight against the coronavirus, there's little to celebrate. Right now, we are heading a million miles per hour in the wrong direction. New U.S. cases in a single day hit record highs Wednesday, Thursday, and again Friday, when more than 57,000 new cases were reported, showing the pandemic is winning. It's absolutely the saddest thing, the most unnecessary situation that we're finding ourselves in, and it's behaviorally driven. Cases in 37 states have risen since the economy started to reopen. In Arizona, 50 Phoenix firefighters tested positive. Another 40 are in quarantine. In Florida, a state where leaders resisted safety measures, 10,000 new cases were recorded Thursday alone. But now, with some Florida hospitals stretched to the limits caring for patients, Miami-Dade County put in a 10 p.m. to sunrise curfew until further notice. There and in other parts of the nation, popular beaches will be closed this holiday weekend. We all wish we could have the beaches open, but it's just not the right thing to do. Malibu, California Mayor Karen Ferrer is keeping an eye on surfers after the governor ordered most Southern California beaches closed again. Since they reopened three weeks ago, there's been a surge in cases, including some lifeguards. And Galveston, Texas closed beaches, fearing crowds would pour in from Houston, where one out of four people tested positive. Primarily, we're seeing a surge in young people who are really just not paying any regard to the risk of this. A frustration for health professionals. Do we really have to say hashtag don't kill grandma? People have to realize there are consequences to getting infected and spreading it to people who are vulnerable. They can die. Many cities now require masks. In Santa Monica, anyone not wearing one could end up with a ticket. And Chicago is joining several areas, including New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut, requiring visitors from hotspot states quarantine for 14 days upon arrival. We're going to do everything that we can to keep members of the public safe. That includes visitors from California, and some aren't happy about it. I'm not going to go somewhere that's in full quarantine. Like, once you set foot on that ground, like, you have to quarantine. That's what that means. Like, I don't want to have to go through that. Dr. Shoshana Ungerleider has been following the latest developments. Dr. Ungerleider, thank you for joining us. Many state health departments are urging Americans to stay at home this holiday weekend. From what we know about how the virus spreads, meeting in large groups, especially indoors, could be dangerous. But what's your advice for people who still want to get together for celebrations? Is there a way for them to do that and stay safe? Yeah, thank you, Lana. The, the big takeaways here are wear a mask at all times uh, when you leave your home, uh, distance at least six feet away from others, and staying outdoors is much safer uh, than indoors. We know this lowers your risk by about 20-fold. And limit the number of people that you interact with. Ideally, stay within your own family if possible. I'd say if you go to a restaurant, choose a place where employees are mandated to wear masks, uh, sit outside. And we know that the longer the time that somebody is exposed uh, to a person who's infectious, um, the greater the risk. So it's a good idea to spend as little uh, time as possible at the restaurant. And, and for those 4th of July barbecues, everyone should actually bring their own food and plastic utensils. This means no sharing of food or use of communal bowls for chips. Uh, different households should sit separately, uh, six feet apart. Uh, and if guests have no choice but to go inside uh, to use a bathroom, have all the doors going toward the bathroom open so no one has to touch any door handles. You know, this this holiday weekend is 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 critical. Um, that everybody realize that their behavior every moment of every day matters. Your actions today could could save the lives of the people that you love. That's really the important point, that even if you feel like you're healthy or, um, or that the people around you are healthy, that there's still the possibility that you could be a carrier. 
Um, I, I also want to ask you, you mentioned the face masks. A number of states have mandated masks in public. I'm wondering if you think that that is enough to help flatten the curve, or should there be nationwide stricter safety measures? That's a great question, Lana. You know, absolutely, everybody should be wearing a mask. And frankly, uh, uh, a nationwide mandate for face masks would make very, very good sense. Of course, you know, staying at home uh, is is the safest place to be. There's also this, uh, you know, use of, of face shields that we know healthcare workers wear, and they're absolutely effective at reducing the spread of COVID. Um, you know, again, everybody should be wearing masks, but if you have access to a face shield, wearing it not only prevents uh, you from spreading COVID, but also it covers your eyes and may offer more protection to the mucous membranes of your face where you might be getting infected. Uh, some people find that wearing masks is uncomfortable. And, and, if you, and if you're constantly readjusting the mask, this puts you at greater risk by touching your face and then possibly transferring the virus to your hand. So wearing a face shield uh, tends to be less cumbersome. And of course, it's clear plastic, so others can see your face. So I think for people who might I, be at higher so risk for Go ahead. Oh, sorry. I, I am so glad, Dr. Ungerleiter, that, you, that you're bringing this up, because I have actually been hearing from lots of people, especially since we know that much of the country is going to see temperatures in the 90s and possibly even higher this weekend, and, and masks can be uncomfortable in the heat. They have been wondering if it's possible to wear the face shield, that plastic shield, without the masks, even though we know that when we see healthcare workers wearing them, they have both the mask and the shield. Uh, but if, the, if, uh, if just the shield is sufficient if a person finds a mask uncomfortable. I think that there's still a lot of confusion about that. Can you clarify? Yeah, you, you can wear a face shield without a mask. You know, again, it covers your eyes, your nose, ideally comes down, you know, over your chin and your mouth. So this is protective. Um, and if you happen to be at, at higher risk for complications from COVID of older age or underlying health conditions, you can actually wear a shield and a mask at the same time, as you pointed out, uh, for added protection. But I would say high level, whether you choose a mask or a face shield, know that they absolutely save lives and everybody should be wearing them at all times if they need to leave home. There is a new study out of Sweden that people are wondering about right now. It suggests that public immunity to COVID-19 could be more widespread than previously thought. Can you tell us, does this, does this refer to people uh, in specific countries or, uh, or globally? And can you also let us know a little bit more about the role of T cells and how they could protect specific individuals from contracting the virus? Uh, the immune system is complex uh, and has two main ways that it protects the body. One is through an antibody response that we've heard a lot about, and then the other through a T cell response. So this study out of Sweden looked at the T cell response of people with mild or more asymptomatic COVID, and they found that many had T cell mediated immunity, even if the person hadn't tested positively for antibodies. So this was a study, uh, you know, as I said, out of Sweden, but but really potentially applies worldwide and is encouraging. But more research needs to be done to understand whether these T cells completely block the virus or whether they might protect an individual from getting sick, but then not stop them from carrying the virus and transmitting it to others. It's, it's important to note that these results haven't yet been peer-reviewed, which is an important part of the scientific process, and this was a small study. So we'll need larger and longer-term studies to understand how lasting this immunity is and how these different components of, of COVID-19 immunity are related. Well, I know that there's a lot of research still being done and a lot of uh, things that the medical community are still learning about this global pandemic. Dr. Shoshana Ungerleiter, thank you for joining us and answering some of our questions. Thank you for having me.